Okay, in the image of God, 5.4. Let me go here to the full screen. And we are going to see how humanity was created in the image of God, that man was created in the image of God and what connection that has with the Trinity. Um, this is, of course, based on Genesis 26, 27. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Look at this love, beautiful I illumination. Say, I love that so much. It's amazing. It really is. And look at this one. So in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. This is Genesis 1 to 3. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light and there was light. Remember this connection that we made of human nature actually appearing with the light, mm -hmm. although man appearing on the sixth day. Yeah, mm -hmm. he's going to make an argument, he's going to make a, diff a similar argument about the image of God in connection to the word Genesis connected to the apocalypse, to the end time. So beginning and end are the same thing. So, okay, so we have here a region that most is mostly is going to take from Gregory of Nyssa, which was a, an Eastern Orthodox thinker. And he's going to say the image is perfectly image except in subject, although the true image of God is the word. Mm -hmm. Okay. Human nature is simply made in the image and likeness of God. That is the word. In the word. In the word. So what do you take the meaning of in the word to be? Well, it's in the word. Um, the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And human nature participates of the word from the word is just not in subject. Yes, it's not the same subject, mm -hmm. but it belongs to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we make these distinctions in negative theology, we cannot just say that one thing is part of something because they're intrinsic to each other, but we need to speak them out. We need to distinguish so we make distinctions, but they're not separations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Again, it's not like cutting a melon. Yeah. And, and, and looking at the parts of it. Yeah. It's like you take the whole circle of it mm -hmm. and what's in the center is all, all those things. Although mm -hmm. the center is unique and it's infinitely small. Yeah? yeah. And infinitely powerful. But all those things are contained in it. Yeah. Yeah. So when it comes to explaining how him humans are in, made in the image mm -hmm. of God, we're going to develop these thoughts right now. Where so let me do, I'm going to do this. Next slide. <clears throat> next slide. Already. Already. Next slide. Yeah. So let's go here. I find this image very interesting as well. This is yeah. yeah, this image is beautiful. This one here. This, yes, yes. This one here yeah. is just incredible. I'm just thinking about these four. I don't know, it reminds me of cells. I don't know if it's meant to. Yeah, well, they're very like sort of like yin and yang type of uh, symbols, mm -hmm. but a, a little bit more developed and colorful. Mm -hmm. But this is a description of the creation, yes. yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Of this. Yes, well, that's what I thought. Chapters uh, especially. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't find exactly where this image is, for, to which book it belongs or to which time. It's certainly further than the 9th century. Mm -hmm. It's probably uh, later medieval, maybe 12th or... 13th century probably okay so we are going to go now to slide yes. number two 
So let me choose here. Here we go. And here we go. Off we go. And let me. I'm very yes. excited about this. So and then the first question is around yes. human around human nature Absolutely. is, is human nature composed of a body and soul? So human nature composed yes. of body and soul is wholly or partly made in the image of God. So the answer that the origin is going to give us mm -hmm. is the whole image subsists in whole animal. Mm -hmm. So the whole image of God subsists in the whole of the animal. Mm -hmm. It rests on the fundamental assertion that God is beyond all things and in all things. Yes. So the whole of the human being is made in the image of God because everything that exists yeah, yeah. subsists. So the God is in all things. So mm -hmm. therefore, everything that we are, including the animal part, mm -hmm. is in the image of God. We're going to make distinctions around that because it's not the same for every aspect. I was okay? going to say, is it like there was something a bit earlier, which is like God both is and is not all things. Yeah. So it's it's just like if, say, say someone has a child, that child is both them and not them. If someone has a child, that child is them. Yes. So it's it's kind of like if God is the father of all things, mm -hmm. then he it's not that he is the thing, but he is the thing without being the thing. Yes. So he both is and is not. It's not taking away individual agency from that thing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Good. So the argumentation for this answer develops like this. It fo it follows Augustine. Augustine. Oh Augustine. My darling. <laughs> follows Augustine. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Like I just say Augustine. But. So human nature, neither bodily nor spiritually, but intelligibly, mm. is made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. So it's not about the body or the spirit but the intelligibility of that human nature mm -hmm. that is made in the image of God. Mm -hmm. So the word, when the word is there, the word is created, but God is also in the word and within that word is also human nature. And that's what's made in the image of God. Again, it's like we go back to that center mm -hmm. of the clock as an explanation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it is rather by a certain wonderful and intelligible division mm -hmm. that man is divided into two parts. So there's this division, which actually doesn't really mean that we are like two separate parts. Mm -hmm. It's just the, it's, it's one whole with different aspects, but keeping the integrity never just one or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one cannot exist without the other. Mm -hmm. So the soul possesses mm. certain movements, Ooh. intellect, reason, interior sense, exterior sense, and vital motion. So the ones I put in capital letters mm. are distinguished from the ones I put in the lower, case. in the lower cases. Mm -hmm. It is at the same time simple and whole, yeah. not a unity of parts. Can I ask so, a question? So every time we talk about these things, we're not talking about parts. We're mm -hmm. talking about a unity from which we have to distinguish, make distinctions of different aspects of it, because otherwise we wouldn't be able to understand reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Actually, I think this bit might answer it. So let's go through it first and then I'll see if I still have a question. OK, so soul is the most simple, the most invisible and the most indivisible. The most indivisible and the most impartible essence and is not lesser in the minor offices. The minor offices are this one, the exterior sense and the vital motion, nor magnified in her greater offices, nor is she greatest in her greatest offices, mm -hmm. but in all she is equal mm -hmm. of herself. It's very clever, isn't it? So, yes. Yeah, so we have <laughs> here again, so the methodology is always the same one. It's there's this negative theology yeah, yeah, yeah. in order to talk about these things that you couldn't otherwise talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thus, the whole soul is made in the image of God. Mind is the true image of God. Reason, the material life principle, is the image of the image, mm. and matter is the second mm -hmm. image of the image. <laughs> yeah, so this is like yeah, a stratification. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. And if you think about it, it's very logical actually. Mm -hmm. 
primarily in the mind, human nature is made in the image of God, but Irina also exalted the place for a place for other parts yes. of human nature. Wait, before you go to the next yeah. bit. Um, um, yes. So what I, I had some questions around what vital motion is. A vital so motion when it's is an interior sense and exterior sense. Is that sort of like when you have a feeling internally, an exterior sense is like when you have a sense or a physical sensation. Now this or will that, be more like interior sense will be more like intellectual sense. But is that not intellect? Yes, but it's it's is the sense of the movement of the conceptual realm. Realm. So where would intuition fit with so that? It will be it will be more like your mind. Yeah. Is intu does that cover intuition? Well, I guess intuition could be like a connection between the two. Mm. But Origina in the ninth century, he's not talking about intuition. Mm. I haven't heard that word said yet. Okay. So it could mean the intuition could be a connection between the two mm. or could be exterior sense, although exterior yeah. sense is more like the senses and vital motion will be things like your physiology, for oh, example. Okay. Yeah? okay, I just wanted to like understand a bit. So this will be more in the realm of the abstract right. and this will be more in the realm of the, um, of the living cells, mm -hmm. what, what life actually does in the material sense of it mm -hmm. and everything related to to the sense of human beings around that like you know s touch and taste and vision and mm. hearing and so on and this will be referring more to intellectual properties yes yeah like intellect reason and interior sense could be so something like for example when you meditate and you mm -hmm. you have this interior sense yes. of your own existence that's kind of what i thought it meant yeah. But that's not something that's like exteriorly kind of yeah. tangible. We'll get to that because in the book he will probably develop these concepts much more. Yes. This oh. is from Derdry Carabine, which makes like a uh like a short version of it. See, yeah. I think that's all I had on that. So soul is the most simple and most indivisible mm. and the most impartible Part. essence. And is not lesser in the minor offices, nor magnified in the greater offices, nor is she greatest in her greatest offices, but in all she is equal of herself. So this is like a unifying principle of, of the human being as a whole. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Have you ever wondered, like, if you look at yourself after three years, you don't have any of the cells that you had mm -hmm. three years ago mm -hmm. and yet you're still you yes so why is that and you expect me to be the same from day to day but again me i'm more all right so let's continue guess. let's look at human nature shall we so that's the whole soul is made in the image of god the whole soul Whew. mind is in the true image of god reason the material life principle is the image of the image mm -hmm. and matter is the second image of the image primarily in the mind, human nature is made in the image of God. Also, ex so, so it's, it's also exalted. It also has an exalted place for other parts of the human nature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And are we going to learn now about what other parts of the human nature are? What's the next slide? Let us see. Let's see what's coming up, shall we? Okay, so what that slide will be are we here. On? Okay, so we've got this one and then two more to go. Correct. Number three. Let me go there. Here we go. So second question will be, what kind of image is present in human nature? The image of the divine nature in human nature is Trinitarian, both universally as essence, power, operation, and particularly in relation to each aspect. Mm -hmm. Human nature expresses the image of the Trinity through its constitution as essence in being, power in will, operation in knowing or intellect, reason and sense, that is Father, Son mm -hmm. and Spirit. Of the five parts mm -hmm. of the soul, intellect, reason and sense, body and life principle. The first three are the inner man, as we would mm -hmm. think that we were explaining before, made in the image of God. And then you have the body and life principle, the outer man after the fall. Mm -hmm. 
I don't know if there is a little bit of a contradiction here because everything was included before mm -hmm. and now we are talking about the fall. Mm -hmm. But we do know that in Erigena, Erigena includes in human nature everything, yeah. animal and spiritual being. Yeah, and they're both together. They're not separated, mm -hmm. but something happens around the fall. I can accept the concept of the fall because obviously when you look at humanity, there's some problem there that is very fundamental that needs to be resolved, yeah? Which is at the core of evil and fear and control and all the problems that we're having, which is the reason why we're exploring this yes. perspective, yeah? So then with regard to the intellect, reason and interior sense, they are the, con the true constitution of human nature mm. and its role as knower. Not knower. No, not Noah. <laughs> no. Intellect, unknowable in itself, capable of transcending itself, revolves around the unknown God beyond all things. Well, let's go over that bit again. I feel like that's very important, though. Yes. So with regard to the intellect, reason and interior sense, the true constitution of human nature and its role as mm. knower. Yes. What does okay. that mean to you? Well, it means that, so the knower is always the superior one with the original, yeah? Mm -hmm. So the knower is the, is the part that is truly connected to God. Yes. Yeah? It's a knower that is not just intellectual. When you, you remember, we saw that it means something that is much more profound, mm -hmm. yeah? In fact, this knower cannot be possibly known. Yes. So you know because you, you know that you know. Yes. But you don't know the knower, really. Yes, yeah. I mean, that bit is really interesting. The next bit, the unknowable in itself. Yeah, and the, the, inter the intellect unknowable in itself, yeah. because this part of the intellect is a much deeper concept. That means mm -hmm. like the, the, the essence that we are, that was born also in the essence of God mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. So it revolves around the unknown God beyond all things. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the one that can never be reached, but it's at the, at the source of everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's go here. Um, slide number four. Number three. And we're going to go to slide number four now. And it will be here. Here it okay, is. Okay, so we have this three-part division of the soul in human nature, which this division is going to have the greatest effect. Um, the intellect remains above the rest of its nature despite the fall yeah, mm -hmm. and the banishment from paradise. We have here this image about it. Then the true image of the soul nature. extends. The true nature of the soul extends beyond all creatureliness. Ooh. What a beautiful word. Yes, yeah? what a beautiful word. Yeah, we're all full <laughs> of creatureliness. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and revolves around its creator and an eternal and intelligible and intelligible motion. Hmm. The direct result of the image of God within goes towards the human nature, which reflects its divine exemplar in that while embodied, but remains spiritual in essence. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. you following? Yes, I'm wondering which one is next, over here or over here? Uh, let's go here. Or down here. The dominion of human nature over the rest of creation rightly is rightly deserved um, and is only slightly tarnished by the sin of Adam and Eve. So Erigena mm -hmm. doesn't take the fall as like we are this sort of corrupt beings mm -hmm. beyond redemption. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this comes later in Christianity very strongly. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, as you can see, Erigena is quite a sort of positive mm -hmm. philosopher when it comes yeah. to humans yeah and human nature and it links it directly to god yes. yeah so and it doesn't bring god like this completely unreachable thing but god is like at the essence of what human nature is well, so the, we're very connected indeed i wonder with adam and eve and i guess the fool is going to go we're going to go into the fool another time are we we're going to go into the fall We're going to go right in, kind of mm. keep falling and falling. We're going to get But falling. I was just wondering, like, with God and Adam and Eve, it's like, wasn't the fall was meant to happen, no? Yes, well, actually the fall, so for Erigena, it happens instantly. Yes. 
So the, the moment the moment man appears as a physical being, the fall is already there. Yes, well, I mean... And paradise comes later. Because my, my feeling with the fall is... It's like if someone says to someone, and you created the thing and you know the, the nature of the thing, and you say to them something that you know that they can't do, it's almost like if he'd said, eat the apple... Mm-hmm. then it wouldn't be it's like the fall had to happen in order for human nature to be really exposed for what it is yes and, and indeed that's that's how it happened yeah. yes it, yeah yes yes actually for this is correct for Eurigena. yeah i don't know for all other christian thinkers because i've been thinking recently i've been reading about the paradox of predictability and unpredictability and in that situation you could probably predict that at some point the apple would be eaten. Do you know what I mean? It's like very, well, very predictable. It's at the source of freedom, mm. and for Irina, freedom comes from that. It comes from the from the from the physical being. Mm. Yeah, I digress yeah. slightly. Apologies. And no, 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 and it's very good because it connects with all the parts, and also it's uh, and then it's grace, the one that comes from, from real mm. the core of human nature that comes from the core of. Mm the divine itself yeah mm. so freedom and grace are, are greatly connected mm. yeah grace is a beautiful word isn't it it is yeah so the essence of being of this of the soul is essential not being. the essential being of the soul is not other than her substantial motion oh hmm. <laughs> there you go the ability of human nature to transcend itself in relation to the ascent to God, will be will be seeing ah. that in chapter seven. So but tight. we are going we to talk this one. We haven't about done this one. just as the angelic intellects are in eternal circular motion around God. Yeah, this is a bit of a. Is that in relation to the photo? Of yeah, God? look at this beautiful image. It's just that incredible. is beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the next one. Which is a is a final one or no? Uh, yes, it is the final one of this chapter. Okay, so let's go here, here. Oh, it's a wonderful project. We are there, and then we are there. And here we, here go. we are, and I'm going to do this, um, this one. So, so the dignity, so for original humans are very high in dignity, actually, as you can see, is a, is a Neoplatonic positive view of human nature. The fall doesn't ir- irredemptly tarnish human nature. It's almost like it's part of it. Yeah, it's almost like he gets into a bit of a contradiction because is that human nature, never human nature, everything that we are is included. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe except the fall, but the fall is that it doesn't tarnish. So we, it's not like we lose complete access mm-hmm. to our essence mm-hmm. because of that. Yeah. So the dignity of human nature, constant theme in the Periphysium in book number four. Mm-hmm. So it talks about the ability of human nature to transcend itself in relation to the ascension to God in chapter seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what what we said before. Yeah. So let's go here. But despite the consequences of the sin of Adam and Eve, true nature of the soul, as in the image of the transcendent God, never fully concealed. This is what I was just saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is some beautiful images. It's all connected. This is the fall. Yeah. This is paradise. And this is the eschaton. This is the last. This is the apocalypse, mm. basically. Yeah. And in Irigina, the three are connected intimately in one event instantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what book is this taken from this image here? I don't know. It's Actually, beautiful. I don't know. I really know. love that one. Yeah. So, so the eschatological dimension for Irigina is understanding that the beginning clarifies the end mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> and in the end so the surprising conclusion this is the mm-hmm. very end of the periphysion in book number five mm-hmm. so in the context of a discussion of the return of all things to god he reinterprets the significance of human nature as image yeah so we come full circle to what yeah. we started if he keep my commandment he may become our image and likeness and we'll back to paradise and we are finished with chapter number four Thank very you good very much there <laughs> we, we go give me a second I'm <laughs> I'm